Hey, what's up, guys? So we're back again with my HP Elite Book 8460P, and we're going to be doing some CPU installation as well as a little bit of testing with some games. This is the first time I've ever installed a new CPU into a laptop. I didn't even know up until this point that laptops could have components that could be switched out besides the memory and something like a Bluetooth adapter or Wi-Fi adapter. I just want to make it very clear from the beginning so I'm not wasting anyone's time that this is pretty much just me switching out the original CPU with the new one that I bought. The one that came with the laptop was an i5 2520M and the one that I bought off eBay for 60 bucks is an i7 2820QM. And like I said before, the main reason why I bought this laptop was so I could run Unity 3D while I'm at work or just while I'm not at my main desktop at home. And as you'll see later, Unity 3D runs very well doing very simple 3D projects. The main reason I felt it was necessary to upgrade is because I'll be getting two more cores as well as four more threads with this new CPU, as well as getting five more megabytes in cache, which brings the total up to eight megabytes. Everything else performance wise is virtually the same, except with a little bit higher turbo frequency. The installation process was surprisingly easy. Rather than having a number of screws on the back to remove the back panel, HP made it really easy by having some release latches on the back that you just switch their position and just slide the back cover off. And getting to the CPU was just as easy as well. There's a fan that you have to remove in order to get to the heatsink. And once you remove that, you just take a couple of screws off the heatsink and the CPU is exposed. And I think I was the first one to do a CPU installation on this laptop because the filter that's part of the heatsink was really, really dirty. Honestly though, I really couldn't tell. Once I lifted off the heatsink and saw the thermal paste that was applied, it that doesn't really look like the way a factory would apply thermal paste. So maybe it was switched out before because there was a lot of leftover thermal paste. And as you'll see in a little bit, I'll admit I didn't do a very good job of applying new thermal paste to the new CPU either. The heat spreader for the new CPU is like a rectangular shape and I've, I've only ever applied thermal paste to like desktop CPUs so you just put a little bit in the middle it'll spread out once it makes contact with your CPU cooler. But I wasn't sure for this one so I kind of applied it in an extremely strange way and I really hope I didn't put too much or too little I'm not sure. And here's a shot of them together and the i7 heat spreader is much larger than the i5. So right now I don't have much to say until I have everything installed and we get to the uh, sort of benchmarks. They're not really benchmarks but just some examples with this new CPU. So just enjoy the music and me installing the CPU.
So as you can see, it successfully booted on the first try. I don't know why, I just half expected it to explode once I turned it on, since this was my first CPU installation on a laptop. And using it for the first time, I could already tell the difference between the i5 that was originally in there compared to the i7 I have in here now. Using the laptop when I had just taken it out of the box, it was already pretty smooth and quick, but with the i7, just the way uh, the start menu comes up, the way programs open, things like that, is just much more snappier and just much more quicker as well. And here we have our first game test as well, which is Diablo 3. These Blizzard games just never cease to amaze me and surprise me which, with what hardware you could run them on. They run on the bare minimum requirements. Of course, as you can see, it runs nothing like how it would run on like a modern day desktop, like a mid-level desktop. It runs more like a, I guess like a lower quality version of like a console port of the game. I didn't have fraps open or anything like that, but just from playing it, it I think it ran, it's probably around 20 to 25 FPS, maybe a little lower. And even in sections where I was fighting enemies, it was still, you know, it was still doable. It wasn't terrible. I'm playing through as my mage right now so I could use all my spells and just have a bunch of shit on the screen. Um, and, you know, it, it chugged a little bit, but it, like I said, it was still very playable to me. For just being on a laptop with no dedicated graphics or anything like that. For StarCraft 2, I did not really do in a very intensive test. I just kind of wanted to see if it would boot, uh, if I could get into match, and you know what would happen after that. I set the quality settings and everything like that to low before the match started. And when I got in, I believe the frame counter, it was around like 40 FPS just from the first couple seconds of the game. But I didn't get very far or try to see how what it would be like later on. But, you know, as you get into the later game, I don't know, maybe like 10, 15 minutes in and you and your opponent has an army, I would, it would probably be, you know, somewhere around 20 or something like that. However, for me, that's doable just for taking a quick break from a project. And right here, we have pretty much why I bought this laptop was so I could run Unity and, you know, learn how to program in my off time. And Unity runs great. Adding objects to whatever project you're in, downloading assets, all that kind of stuff it runs really smooth almost like i'm working on my desktop and that was the most important thing for me so overall buying this laptop you know refurbished and used for a really cheap price it was a good idea a couple things that suck about this laptop are one the bluetooth adapter that comes with it doesn't work very well i try to connect it to some speakers or some bluetooth headphones that i use and it it has a lot of connectivity issues unfortunately and that could just be with my unit you know my experience but it's a good thing to think about if you're considering that also maybe it just goes without saying for most laptops but the battery for this laptop that came with it sucked it lasts less than an hour when using it off the charger and when i bought a separate battery that had more cells in it it only gave me like an hour more of use so I pretty much have to keep this laptop plugged in at all times when I'm using it. And I have my battery settings set to performance or enhanced, I forgot what it was called, just so I could get the best performance on my laptop. And when you have it set to something like that, the fan is really loud and it gets really hot as well. However, for me, those are kind of just like minor pet peeves. The laptop works and it runs great and I hope that it'll last me a long time. Well, that's it and thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry this wasn't the most in-depth HP Elite book overview that's all on YouTube, but there's actually a lot of great videos out there that you guys can watch about this laptop. I'd love to hear some feedback though, so leave a comment or send me a message. See you guys next time.